Hey guys, Adam from Equipped Indoor. So, get out here in the field today and uh, thought I'd take out my uh, Tasmanian Tiger mission pack. This is from JTQ Gear. Got it loaded pretty well. And just take the time to show you some stuff I'm working with. I'm gonna be doing some review and that way I can evaluate the bag. Uh, it is a hot and muggy day. Everything is sopping wet. I mean, you can look on some of the sides of the trees. You can see how dark they are because it rained like forever last night. And it's been raining the last couple of days here. Uh, but you know what? Had to get out here, had a couple of days. I was under the weather myself, so I didn't get a chance to get out in the field. It actually feels good to be out here, surrounded by nature, hearing all the sounds right now. Uh, even though it's kind of hot and muggy, I don't care. I'm not at the house right now, and that's always a good thing. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at this real quick and uh, show you what we're working with with the uh, Tasmanian Tiger bag. So JTQ Gear sent us this bag a couple weeks ago. I've had it out a couple times. As you guys can see, it's already uh, covered with dog hair. So Ace has already <laughs> slept on it one night out in the field. Uh, but all in all, it does come in multicam. So I'm pretty excited about that. This is uh, retails for about $214. It's actually one of their most popular bags. Um, this does not have an internal frame like the last bag I had. It does have some wings though. Decent size uh, yoke strap and, and some very actually very comfortable, um, very comfortable shoulder straps. Uh, front loading backpack with two large main compartments, seven separate pockets all together. We'll go over that here in the very near future. This does come in black khaki, multicam, and flectarn. So all of our uh, German military guys out there, you guys will be able to get it in the color that you want. Of course, Tasmanian Tiger is a German-made company, so I'd expect that it would come in flectarn. We do have some pals webbing here that actually is nylon covered up with the multicam material, which is actually pretty good. This is normal heavy gauge nylon that they use for most webbing. A lot of times I see PAL's webbing panel that is just the nylon for the material. So that is actually very good. That's gonna meet the standards of the PAL's webbing to be pretty tough. If it's just the, the nylon material, that the, uh, if it's just the material that we use for the multicam, that door is not gonna be as strong as some really heavy gauge nylon. We do have a name tape place area over here and then we do have a flag over here. So of course I put some name tags on there just to give you guys a point of reference. Now the starting on the back of this bag, it's kind of the most interesting thing, but also one of the things I'm not sure how I feel about. And I really haven't found the correct niche for it yet. And we have this area here that we can open up from both sides. And I've seen this on a couple other bags. This is getting more and more popular. I guess so, you know, right or left-handed person can use. The only other thing I can say is you can slide something large through here, like a bedroll or something like that. It does not have uh, compression straps on the bottom of the bag. The reason being is like all Tasmanian Tiger stuff, it does come with a rain fly. It does have a drag handle in here, but it does come with a rain fly that's included. Of course, this one is, is khaki, so you can throw that over there and waterproof your pack. So I really didn't know how I felt about this. There is mesh on the inside, which is from this pocket right here, as you guys can see. So you have these kind of very funky pockets in the back. Like I said, once this bag is full, there's not much volume or space in there. It's basically just a slot. Then you have this pouch right here that I kind of threw some of my fire gear and some of my MRE stuff, I think. Actually, I think this is my cooking pouch. I threw some MRE components down in here and a little uh, Vargo stove. We do have some decent sized compression straps on the sides though. But again, same flaw I saw with the last Tasmanian Tiger bag. They're not giving you that much extra material, as you guys can see. I mean, they could throw 10 extra inches of strap in here, no problem, and you have these nice tie-down areas to compress it. But if I have something that's pretty big volume, like a bedroll or a sleeping bag that I wanna throw on the, on the side of my bag, that would be the best course of action for me. The bag does have tons of uh, drag handles or pull handles, which I am pretty fond of. And as far as I'm concerned, this could be a little bit meatier. I don't know how this is gonna last over a long period of time, but the strap system, just seems like it's a little thin, but I haven't had any issues with it. I've, I've hiked around with this bag a little bit. There's no problems thus far. And the uh, wing system here for the, the belt can be removed. But as you guys can see, that's just put in there by Velcro. On these wings, they do have some little pouches right here. I threw an extra multi-tool on one side, and on the other side, threw in my Petzl lamp, and of course, some chapstick. I mean, come on guys, it's me. It's a pretty decent carabiner, locking carabiner on the side here. We do have 
little ejection areas right here for for different things. If you want to do some hose, your your hydration bladders in different areas, we can do that. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the main compartment of this bag. So we do have, I think, seven injection areas for, for whatever you want. Mainly just, uh, you guys can see, they're actually kind of hard to see. But do you have any, any wires or any uh, hoses that you want to come out of the bag? There's three on each side, and there's one in the back here for a hydration bladder. The bag is split into two compartments, which I'm not a huge fan of. But I do think this bag has a little bit more volume than some others. So, got our Deep Woods Handcrafter uh, little tindle, tinder pouch. I love this thing. Some mechanics gloves. Now this is just a uh, gun sock. This is wool. I use this as a scarf. I use this thing all the time. But just an extra article of clothing. Got our little uh, buff head wrap. I think this is a little toiletry kit. It's a little toiletry kit slash medical kit. Take care of me for the whole uh, the whole weekend. Got my uh, Baco Laplander saw. Love this thing. This is an extra bag that I use to throw uh, either you know throw extra clothes in here to make a pillow or some leaves to make a pillow or you know if it's an extended stay throw my dirty clothes in there. There's nothing worse than having your gear smell like sweaty socks. Got some uh, jute twine and some bank line. Threw some extra pink lady candles in here. And then in here, we got extra hydration bladder, some uh, aluminum groundhog MSR tent stakes, a couple hanks of five, 550 cord, Extra flashlight, Aquamara Pro, Frontier Pro, some extra Ziploc bags, some uh, snare wire, a uh, signal mirror, got a backup mirror, and of course our tube for our water pro we also use for our fire. And then we have some of these Cat9 tie down things. These things are pretty cool. So, it's easy to get two gadgets and gizmos. I did have extra clothing in here. Um, did not put it back in here after I was done my last trip with this. But, you know, you can throw an extra shirt and pair of pants in here. No problem. There's enough space in there for that. I think they're still pretty funky in the in the uh, hamper right now. All right, so open up the back. This is a. Uh, I've been telling people for a while now. I've been going to basically standalone kits um, for different things. This is a this is a fire kit that I'm working on now. This is a mil spec monkey admin pouch from uh, Max Edition. This is not what is going to be the final container of this kit. I'm going to choose something else. This is just something I, I took off of my uh, my vest a while back, and um, I had to never put it back on there. And so I just thought it'd be interesting to, to try it out and build a fire kit around this. I'll probably do a separate video, just kind of show you guys the the process I go through when I'm making a kit. So I'll take this out a couple times. There's pieces and components in this that I know I don't have here right now. Um, one is some of my percussion fire tools, like um, my uh, my steel and my flint. Um, but this is more of a fire training kit. Go out there and practice your different skills. There's a couple of different components in here. I even actually got an Emberlet stove in here, which is pretty awesome. That's why I love the Emberlet, because you can, you know, right there. I, mean, I think it's just freaking awesome. I got a Pink Lady candle. I got some char cloth. I got a tin. I have some matches, some fat wood, some uh, jute with wax, some triaxane, a um, lighter, cotton ball, and Vaseline, magnesium, and ferro rod. So all kind of fun fire starting devices in here and we'll probably do a separate video of that and you know do a couple parts until we finalize what we're going to do with that like i said before it has been raining so this is my german poncho 
love this thing. I mean, this can also be used as a, uh, you know, as a, a cover, some kind of shelter, some, uh, a tent. All right, guys, we got the Grand Trunk hammock right here. So this is just a single. I just, you know, had a chance to play around with the Appalachian one and everybody has referred me to these guys. So it's one of their parachute nylon jobbies. So we're going to knock that one out as well here in a future video. And here I have my uh, Thermarest sleeping pad. This is a new one that I just picked up. I am a, I am a fan. Now I did get the, the smaller version. This is like the regular size version. There is an extra large one. The reason that I didn't get that one is when I lay on my thermal pad, I usually like to keep my boots on at night. Sometimes I'll loosen them up so they're really loose, uh, but keep them on there and I sleep on my back. So my heels, the heel of my boot just goes off the pad. Uh, and for whatever reason, it's, it's more com comfortable for me personally. I like my feet kind of hanging off the pad. Um, and these are pretty squared away. This is filled with foam, of course, and we have our valve right here. We unscrew it, it starts to inflate a little bit, but of course you can just blow in here. There's some people that have a pump, um, but this is the Pro Plus. This is the regular size. This is not the, the large, like I said before, but you guys can see how, how well that uh, do for me. And I did go pretty shelter heavy in this kit because shelter is just uh, you know, the most important thing for me. I mean, we're pretty well rounded on everything else. If I get a good night's sleep and stay warm, stay dry, I'll have a lot more energy and better morale to do whatever I need to do for my outdoor adventuring the rest of the the rest of the event. I mean, I'm all about getting a good night of sleep out in the field. I mean, if we're with a large group of people, two two Advil PM and some earplugs for me, I'm good to go. Ace is there to keep the bears away for me, so I'm good. And also, most of the areas we, we live at, there's uh, nothing but black bear around here. They're pretty uh, timid bear. As long as you don't mess with mom and, and her babies, you won't have a problem with them. Uh, this is the Solo Escape Bivy. Now, this thing is awesome. This is from uh, SOL, from Adventure Medical Kits. Now, they do have a green one. I, for the life of me, cannot find one in the store. Um, you guys can see the material. We had this reflective material. So, this with a very, you know, thin bivy will do wonders for you, especially in the summertime. And this thing has a zipper and everything. You guys can see that. Uh, we did a couple of videos of these. They're pretty tough. You're not gonna kick your boots through these very easily. Um, so this with my sleeping pad is pretty much my, my bedroll. Even if I'm just opening this thing up and like not even zipping it up, but loosely just crawling into it. I'll be up off the ground. I'll use my bedroll with my hammock. That way it kind of spreads it out for me. I don't feel like a, a taco. So what else we got in here? Oh, actually, speaking of water, do need to hydrate a little bit. I'm thirsty as heck. Ah, GSI Outdoors uh, water bottle. Now, a couple things with these um, that I'm not a huge fan of. First of all, there's far too much plastic on this to be able to throw this in the fire. So that's going to constitute a problem. I mean, you could take off this rubber grip, no problem, but the uh, plastic ring holding this together does not remove. So this I use mainly for much my drinking water. Um, it does have a little spill canister here, so you're not, you know, if you're on the move and uh, if this knocks over, you're not going to spill all your water out. It makes it a little bit easier. Of course, it does have plastic in it. You guys know how I feel about plastic, but it is what it is. Over here we have our clean canteen. So I have my canteen cup and my, uh, what is this? I can't even tell anymore, everything's been burnt off. My 40, uh, 40 ounce canteen, freaking love this thing. So that's filled up with water as well. Then I have my little zebra pot. So I got my spork in there, got some uh, powdered eggs. So that and what's my broken down MRE is all I'll be eating for today. We're just coming out for a day hike. I'm not gonna be here much for much longer. And then the most important thing I have in here 
is my extra socks. <laughs> so I, these are uh, alpaca socks. Um, a little bit hot and muggy right now for throwing these guys on. Um, but they dry pretty fast. They're antimicrobial. I mean, they're better than wool. The only, the only complaint I have with these socks is they will wear a lot faster than, than wool. So, you know, you wear them a lot like I do, you're going to go through them. Um, but that's okay. I'd love a fresh pair. They can be on the pricier side. I do have some, some, uh, summer blend and I have some winter blend in here. So, I, you know, put the winter blend on at night, summer blend at home. So I can just constantly rotate through my socks. Um, but uh, believe it or not, they last a little bit longer. Uh, out in the field, they don't stink as much. So I love them. We have the emergency parka we did a video on a while back. And then we, last but not least, we have the sports utility blanket from uh, SOL. And I'm going to do a separate video with this. I actually have not opened this one up yet. Um, but this is a large size uh, reinforced grommet. Uh, very, very light. 11.3 ounces. So you guys have seen me do or using the SOL blanket. This is a beefed up larger version of that kind of on steroids. And speak of the devil, there that guy is right there. So you guys can see that the shelter equipment that I have here is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I'm not going to worry about, you know, the shelter. I can hang from a hammock, get off off the ground. I have plenty of uh, ways of getting up, getting around, uh, cover myself up, different walls. I have plenty of stuff, even for some reason, if it got down into the freezing levels right now. I could do so much with just the Mylar products I have right here. And of course, I have, you know, other, other uh, little Mylar blankets stashed away in all my little kits. Uh, but awesome pieces of equipment. Let's check out the food pouch. I know you guys are interested in that. So we got our Vargo stove. We got some MRE heaters, and these are the real military ones, guys. These aren't the cheap civilian models. Got the real deal. So I got my uh, peanut butter and jelly. Ooh, chicken fajitas. Yummy. Got some chili macaroni. Won't be going to the bathroom for a month. And cornbread stuffing. Caramel apple ranger bar. Fan favorite. Got my crackers for my peanut butter and jelly. Of course, we have to have our orange flavored mix. Cup of soup. And I think I got some cider in here, some uh, tea drinks, salt, sugar, all the other accoutrements. My, my gums, my breath is nice, nice and fresh after my meal. So that's uh, pretty much all we have in here, fellas. And we've already loaded back the other pouch. So, like I said before, I would normally have an extra set of clothing if I was going to do uh, more than an overnighter. But we're going to—we're probably going to hump it back tonight. I don't even think we're going to stay out the whole night. So uh, we, we're running low on batteries already today. But you guys get the point. So let me pack this back up, and uh, we'll close it out. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're all packed up, and I know what you're saying. Adam, what, where's your knife? She's right here. Don't worry. Some uh, other news on that one. You guys are just going to have to wait. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, all in all, pretty happy with this bag, like I said before. Some of the features, a little bit too uh, geared towards military application that I wouldn't necessarily need. Uh, but the size of it, the one thing that I have to say about the Tasmanian Tiger bags, they're giving me that, that functionality for a military-type bag or military-style bag uh, that the size is meeting where I want, the durability is meeting where I want. And I'm not necessarily having to go and grab just a backpacker's bag. There's a couple of Kelty bags recently I've been looking at. Kelty's starting to dabble in some of the military-esque bags. So that'll probably be my next focus point is, is picking up one of those. Uh, there's a couple of Red Wing bags that I thought were pretty nicely designed that I actually saw at Dick's Sporting Good a couple months ago. So one of those, I've got my eye, I might pick that one. I'll have to test it out myself. But all in all, I like this bag. It's uh, fitting that niche. The mission pack here is very much more specialized than the, uh, the trooper packs that I've done before from Tasmanian Tiger. But all in all, you know, I'm pretty happy with their quality. I haven't seen any issues, and I'll be uh, happy to see what they come up with in the near future. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. We're going to find some other place to uh, set up some camp. A little, still a little muggy around here and not really feeling this area quite yet. Uh, we'll play with some more gear and be testing some more stuff for you. So stay tuned, and we'll have some other stuff in the very near future. Hey guys, Adam from Equipped Indoor. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at adam at If you want to check out some more Tasmanian Tiger gear, check out jtqgear.com. Of course, we'll be doing a giveaway on this number here after we're done messing around with it. Don't forget to check out the website at equippedindoor.com. Make sure you guys subscribe and like us on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Be safe. And remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks.